So, Mr. Rodriguez, it's really a pleasure to have you here in Ljubljana, Slovenia, and uh, as one of the most competent, uh, we would like to ask you what are your views uh, on the perspective of Eurozone, what are the alternatives? It's uh, a question that was discussed uh, today here on this uh, uh, round table. Um, please uh, give to our audience uh, some of the views uh, from your aspect that is broader than others. Well, I'm coming from Brussels, but uh, I am in the tour of capitals in Europe uh, with uh, very important debates on the future of the Eurozone. Uh, but I must tell you that the debate we could have today in Ljubljana was a very high level, very important to feed in in the decisions in, in uh, uh, Brussels. Uh, let me tell you that uh, we are moving in two tracks. The first one is adopting measures which are really urgent to have the crisis under control. I think recently the most important one was adopted by the European Central Bank when uh, it was decided to uh, provide uh, unlimited uh, capacity of buying bonds in the financial markets in order to stabilize spreads if this is needed. So this has a bit calmed down uh, the pressure we were in uh, before summertime. But we cannot say that uh, the crisis is overcome from, uh, far from, from this, because we uh, have a problem of uh, public debt, uh, which is still there, particularly in some member states. And uh, we need to, to have uh, efforts coming from these member states to, to rebalance their budgets. But you also need to have uh, strong instruments at European level to bring uh, down these spreads, so the costs of financing. That's why we have now uh, a permanent mechanism for financial stability, which is there. But that's why we are even going further, discussing possible role for euro bonds, so uh, partial issuance of public debt. Of course, these will not come soon, because uh, we cannot only move in this direction if member states accept to have better coordination and better surveillance of their national budgets. So when we accept these, then uh, we can have the conditions to move in this direction of euro bonds. But let me tell you that uh, uh, even this, this is not enough to overcome the crisis and to reduce the, the burden of the public debt. Uh, the, the last important point is to have higher growth and more investment, good investment, in the good direction in the areas with future in uh, Europe and in each member state because this is really the the, the central um, solution we need to have. We need to make sure that our companies, uh, our banks are investing in the new areas of uh, uh, activities which can create better jobs, new kind of jobs in Europe. So I would say that this is in the end the kind of solution we need to have. Uh, so, uh, are we close to a consensus uh, among the member states about the maybe more active role of uh, from the centralized European level, considering the questions of, of course, uh, on the one side of the bonds, the central bank, and other policies that should uh, be maybe adopted to uh, uh, be able to, of course, uh, answer or respond to these uh, really um, questions that are uh, quite uh, needed to be uh, responded as quick as possible to uh, toward them. Well, uh, to be very frank, I think we cannot say that we are close because mm. this is really a quite big reform of the economic and monetary union. But at least there is an important progress because it was recognized that we are uh, confronted with uh, a crisis which is a systemic crisis, not only a crisis of some particular countries, even this is, uh, exists. Second point, we are now working for a comprehensive solution 
where do we need to have, well, uh, fiscal discipline, but also more investment and growth. And more than that, we need to have um, effective policies for convergence in the European Union. And I believe this is particularly important for Slovenia because it is, is a more recent member state. Uh, and we need to recall that the, the, the promise of uh, European integration is to, to count on a large single market, to count on a strong single currency, but also to count on effective policies to uh, foster uh, economic and social conversions in the European Union. So it's always important to recall that this makes part of the deal uh, which should be there uh, to have uh, a successful European integration. Mm, and uh, what would you uh, suggest to Slovenian decision makers uh, uh, considering especially how to stabilize the uh, financial situation. Uh, maybe also one of the questions that are really uh, present right now about the possible referendum on uh, uh, how to manage and run the still uh, mostly and majority state-owned uh, uh, parts of the companies, of the most important companies, and uh, also uh, other questions about, uh, uh, let's say uh, a banking system that should be capitalized or uh, in which direction would you suggest uh, the Slovenian decision makers or also uh, uh, the well, one? I must say that I'm not here to, to, to intervene in uh, Slovenian internal uh, politics. Uh, so my role is more to provide information and updated information about the European framework. So, um, and, and to improve the relationship between Slovenia and the decisions being taken at European level. I can give an example. Uh, in two weeks' time, we'll have an important European Council in, in November in, in Brussels, uh, which will take decisions on the community budget for mm. the next years. And uh, Slovenia needs to come with a very clear posi position on the way uh, to use structural funds as much as possible in favor of Slovenia uh, preferences and uh, needs. So this is uh, the next uh, stage. But then in December, we'll have this general discussion on the future of economic and monetary union. And I would say that a country like Slovenia uh, can play a very important role by, by uh, saying that if we want to have an economic and monetary union with a real uh, sound future, sustainable future, we need to have uh, fiscal discipline but also growth and uh, effective instruments to support economic conversions. If we don't converge on competitiveness and better standards, social and environmental standards is very difficult for the Eurozone to have a sustainable future uh, on the long term. Mm -hmm. No, I was just asking you for your opinion or your attitude. I know that you cannot uh, give uh, the, yes. the advices for our decision makers, but I was asking you about uh, maybe since you are well informed about these questions, uh, uh, what your suggestion would be and uh, as far because these discussions are here pretty uh, intensive in Slovenia about o also possible intervention of uh, Troika of uh, the, the help that uh, uh, might be needed uh, for Slovenia uh, pretty soon. I mean, uh, can you give us a comment? Uh, yes, the comment I, I can uh, give you uh, also uh, taking into account lessons from other countries is that um, of course, the ideal solution would be for Slovenia to avoid uh, truck intervention, mm -hmm. uh, counting on the, the new developments which are taking place in, in different areas regarding uh, the possible role of the European Central Bank, uh, the need to, to have uh, a better uh, use of the uh, instruments to rescue banks. All these should be used by Slovenia. But uh, in any case, uh, Slovenia will deal with conditionality because mm. conditionality now is attached not only to Troika programs but to 
macroeconomic surveillance, to uh, the follow-up of the Stability and Growth Pact, uh, to any kind of support for, for banks. Therefore, the key issue is what kind of conditionality. And the lesson I can uh, uh, present coming from other countries is that we need to have a balanced conditionality. This means that on one hand we need to make sure that we really uh, rebalance our public finances for sure, but we also need to have at the same time investment in growth. So we need to have effective instruments to support investment in growth and job uh, creation. Because this is important as such, but also because without growth it's very difficult to keep uh, the deficits and the debt under, under control. Mm -hmm. um, just one more question. Uh, regarding the European level of uh, taking care of or rights of uh, also minority or uh, so to say uh, shareholders that are re retail shareholders and investors uh, and uh, the legislation that is preparing uh, not just considering MIFID uh, but mm -hmm. also maybe some uh, audit uh, reform and reports and uh, I mean there is uh, quite a lot uh, going on right now at the level of European Commission and also European Parliament uh, for the reforms and uh, new regulation considering uh, the questions of investors, not just institutional investors and the industry, but also regarding the rights and uh, taking care for the rights of uh, retail investors, minority individual investors. Uh, what uh, is uh, maybe your comment on uh, these processes? Well, this is one of the, the major lessons of the financial crisis started in 2007, 2008, is that we need to have clear rules to uh, reestablish uh, confidence uh, between those who save resources and those who use these resources to invest. Uh, so we need uh, much clearer rules, because otherwise the, the small uh, investor, which is really needed because uh, this is uh, a good behavior in, in, in Europe, uh, is, 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 is confronted with a lot of uncertainty. So what we need is to come back to uh, rules of responsible uh, lending and responsible borrowing. And we need to make sure that those who save, they can uh, rely on the future of their effort. So the best way to give value to their savings is to create good conditions for good investments. So banks and the financial markets are there to uh, perform this role. Their role is not uh, exactly speculation. Their role should be to make sure that savings are channeled in the right direction to get real value and like that the effort of the small uh, shareholder can be uh, really respected. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you also recognize the importance of uh, individual and uh, the retail investors and shareholders uh, in Europe. Since, uh, I mean, we organized just a month ago, as uh, I informed you and uh, you're aware of, the uh, largest meeting of investors and uh, shareholders uh, on a world scale here in Ljubljana. Uh, also adopted Ljubljana declaration about the association that uh, in Europe now with uh, regarding uh, uh, European Federation of Users of Financial Services which would take care of uh, this broader uh, part of the question. So I'm very glad to hear that you are also informed of it. Uh, I can feel that uh, we have uh, so to say also strong supporter about uh, maybe one of the most important uh, questions that uh, also this association is dealing with and one of the topics on uh, our uh, today international conference was also if there is a possibility because one of the also most important questions in, in, in Europe is reform of, of the pension system. Uh, uh, how, you, how you see a possibility that uh, uh, capital markets uh, should be uh, revitalized uh, via 
uh, pension reform, uh, of course, uh, also uh, considering individual investors as the ones who should uh, choose the capital markets uh, for their pensions and uh, maybe healthcare system and all the reforms that are right now also discussion on the European level and on the level of uh, the member states. Uh, is there uh, any, uh, I mean, also, uh, or are there uh, any alternatives of different uh, views and aspects uh, from the point of European Commission uh, regarding these questions and maybe some solutions that uh, are uh, in the process of preparation? Yes, I think there is a, an important idea which should be uh, developed is that pension funds need to count on sound priorities to invest in because the, they have the big responsibility of managing the saving efforts of millions of Europeans. So pension funds uh, need to have a, a, a clear opportunity of sound investments. Therefore, we should have a sound but ambitious plan for investments in Europe with uh, choices of future, making sure that pension funds can rely on that to get their uh, fair share of value. From my viewpoint, uh, in order to put together pension funds on the one hand and the good investment plans in Europe, a third piece can help which is to have uh, this instrument called euro bonds. Because if you have euro bonds uh, based on uh, national but also joint guarantees, uh, euro bonds can become a very reliable financial product. Uh, a financial product which should be interested uh, for European savers, but I must tell you also for many of the Euro um, international partners of the European Union. Uh, by the way, I just came from uh, Beijing, and the message I got there is that Europe should move in this direction to create a large market of euro bonds because China will be a buyer of these euro bonds. China mm -hmm. don't want to uh, depend so much only on a, a dollar as a reserve mm -hmm. currency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that uh, this is a quite bold initiative, but I'm pretty sure that uh, it will be very important to, to provide sound investments for pension funds. I'm very glad to hear but uh, as you already explained to us, uh, unfortunately, we are not very close no. to, uh, I mean... Even I must say that uh, we could uh, step up the discussion because in parallel with these urgent measures, now we have on the table of the European Council a discussion on comprehensive plan for the economic and monetary union for the first time. And key decisions can be taken in December. And one of the decisions has to do with euro bonds and the political conditions for that. Mm -hmm. So something can happen. We don't know, but something can happen. Yeah. Well, would you be so courageous to predict uh, in uh, what kind of, are we talking well, about uh, years, was, months, <laughs> decades? Uh, this was exactly what I, I told you, is nobody can predict the future in general and more and now more than ever because the, uh, this is a very complex crisis with a lot of uncertainties. Uh, but there is something I can tell you because I've been involved in preparing uh, European Council meetings for the last 12 years is that all of a sudden, because the crisis is pushing in this direction, uh, the EU is taking uh, important decisions. We were saying that they were impossible one year ago. Mm? Mm -hmm. If you think about, for instance, these recent instruments launched by the European Central Bank, this is uh, what uh, important and positive surprise. So all of a sudden we can again have bold uh, decisions. At least they are already on the table, which is uh, an important progress. Mm. But as far as I can see, you are an optimist. Uh, 
still you have strong optimistic views on the processes? Yes, I, I'm, I'm an optimistic person, but I, I'm also uh, really aware of uh, uh, divergences. Perhaps not on, on the, on the um, idea of one day Eurozone using Eurobonds. I think this will come. The divergences are about uh, on uh, the when and uh, with which conditions. So we are in this point of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would like to go further on and ask you about the taxation of the uh, financial transactions and so on and the, the role, let's say, of the Britain and some other states. Also, considering the questions of uh, Eurobonds is, is one of the important questions, of course. So if you would be so kind, maybe also a short comment well, on the, it. The, the British position now uh, is a bit more clear about this because uh, UK has understood this is on the interests of um, the British economy to avoid a big crisis in the Eurozone. Because if uh, we have a big crisis in the Eurozone, the British economy will also be hit by this crisis. So they understand that the Eurozone needs to move forward with bolder solutions. They understand this. Uh, and they would, for instance, support the idea of Eurobonds, as an example. Regarding the financial and transaction tax, this is uh, more uh, controversial for UK, because UK thinks that uh, they can't, can only accept a tax like that if a tax uh, as financial transaction tax is adopted at global level. And we are quite far from this. Mm -hmm. If you see the discussion in G20, we are quite far from uh, seeing a financial tax adopted. That's why, more recently, uh, in the European Union, there was the decision to move forward in this direction by using the so-called enhanced cooperation, which is so far involving 11 countries. In, there are still some details being discussed. Uh, also uh, because um, some member states think they should use this tax to finance their national budgets and others accept that uh, some resources of this tax could also finance the community budget. Mm -hmm. So we are still fine-tuning this uh, point of discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Let me finish uh, again and uh, go back to a question about the banks and the different roles uh, of the banks. Uh, on one side, of course, uh, giving loans to the economy, to uh, families, to, 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 to the individuals. Uh, and on the other side, of course, this uh, financial industry. So, I mean, are you a supporter of the idea that uh, these two different roles of the bank should be divided with all the products that uh, financial industry developed from in, in the last uh, decades? Or, uh, yeah. In fact, uh, I'm quite in favor. Of course, there are many details to be discussed, but uh, uh, making a more uh, clear distinction between uh, retail banks and investment banks mm. uh, can, can be useful. Uh, we have uh, this distinction uh, more clear in some countries than in others. But as you know, this is being discussed as a general principle to improve banking system in Europe. Yeah, because so far we did not see really changes in the regulations uh, regarding uh, banks and uh, after, I mean, what happened with financial crisis and uh, as far as we can see now, the reasons are pretty clear. So yes. why there is uh, really no uh, changes uh, regarding the possible uh, danger well, be because uh, there are different interests but uh, frankly uh, i think that those uh, who are worried about their savings in retail banks they should be more vocal uh, by calling for a clear separation between uh, retail uh, banks and investment banks in order to avoid this kind of problem we had with the financial crisis mm -hmm. And of course, there are also very important also the interests on a global degree. I mean, you mentioned uh, dollar as, uh, of course, still uh, global currency and uh, the possibility that euro 
also with the euro bonds uh, could gain uh, regarding this uh, matter uh, what you see in the future i mean this uh, because here the interests are not common with the, let's say united states and their central reserves and the national bank and so on and uh, let's say the role of china of course and also some other players on a global level well, I think that it's very important to overcome the zero zone crisis and to make the euro zone uh, a stable and powerful currency area, because the planet needs um, the, the the possibility of choice. So, dollar remains a very important uh, currency, and so far the reference uh, currency. Uh, but um, a strong euro can uh, create the possibility of different choices across the planet and I think this can uh, help the global economy as, as a whole. Uh, this is very clear for China. China would like to have this possibility of choice. Even of course in the longer term, China perhaps would like to have uh, its own uh, currency area, but uh, it's, it's quite, we are quite far from, from this yet. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, of course, I would have uh, some more questions for you, but uh, I suppose we have been uh, uh, quite uh, exact on some uh, yes, most important uh, topics. So, uh, again, I mean, I'm looking forward maybe to have an opportunity to see you again in Brussels, uh, also with our activities uh, in uh, European Federation of Users of Financial Services. Uh, uh, since I, I can see that uh, your um, positions are very valuable also for, for um, our clearer, maybe clearer picture um, of the questions and our uh, efforts that uh, we are dealing through the time. So uh, I would be glad also to give from maybe point of view of uh, the European Association or the Slovenian one, uh, if uh, there you find uh, maybe a need on the, on the reason, uh, we would be glad, of course, like already, let's say, uh, International Monetary Fund and, and OECD and some other missions are always coming to visit uh, our association. So maybe in the future there will be also an opportunity to uh, help what is our primary position uh, to solve these problems that, uh, of course, are our common problems and uh, better we cooperate, the better solution we can find, I suppose. Oh. So. You can count on this. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It was a quite uh, comprehensive uh, talk. Of course, uh, it's always important to make a detailed follow-up of the agenda for financial re uh, regulation adopted in G20, because it's a, it's a very detailed agenda. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is moving forward in some points, but is lagging behind in others. So, yeah, it's uh, important to have um, your stakeholders active about this. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, I of course we will try to be, but as far as you know, I mean, on the, this uh, G20 meetings, uh, there is really mm, not... Uh, uh, not just needed, but uh, they, they would not like to see that also non-governmental association or so on would be present on such a meeting. So I'm, I'm not... Uh yes, but uh, now they are starting to open to uh, uh, non-governmental actors. Mm -hmm. So you should pay attention to that. Okay, we are paying attention and uh, um, thank you for your information. Maybe is there uh, something else that we should do i mean being more proactive regarding because you know these are the bodies that I, as far as uh, i'm aware of uh, don't have really their institutional uh, uh, shell or cover or so i mean there are more or less still informal uh, meetings uh, am i right so uh, to whom then we should uh, approach or or, or write I, I, or whatever i, 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 I can tell you after no no not in an interview